Hello, I'm Dr. George Best of Best Health and Wellness in San Antonio, Texas. And today I'm going to share with you some little known information about rotator cuff problems that even a lot of doctors and physical therapists are aware of. And I think you'll be surprised by the effects that other things besides the shoulder have on the rotator cuff. So I'm going to uh, cut away, change into something more comfortable, and we'll show you a little demonstration I think we'll, you'll find rather interesting. So let's get started. I'm going to demonstrate now the effects that posture have on shoulder mobility and explain why shoulder mobility is tied in with those problems with rotator cuff and, and different types of shoulder pain. What um, a lot of people don't realize, including a lot of doctors and physical therapists, is that the shoulder itself, in a lot of cases, is not really the reason why the shoulder isn't moving properly. And I'm going to do a little demonstration here for you. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm going to start out standing up nice and straight, nice and good posture, with uh, good posture. And I'm going to just raise my arm up straight to the side. And you can see I can get my arm up pretty good. I can get it all the way to where it actually touches my head and without doing any strange contortions to get it there. And I don't have any shoulder pain, so this may be a little different for, for you if you are having shoulder problems. But I'm going to show you now what happens if I just slouch a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to kind of loosen up. And I'm going to just kind of let my shoulders drop down some. Let my upper body slouch forward just a little bit. And now I'm going to do the exact same range of motion. And that's as far as I can go. I could probably force it another few degrees, but that's as far as it's going to get. And you can see, now I'm going to stand up straight again. You can see what happens when I stand up straight. Now I'm going to slouch forward a lot because I see a lot of people that are actually slouched forward quite a bit more than what I showed you the first time. They'll actually come in really slouched forward. Their head's kind of sh shifted forward. Their upper body's really kind of leaning. And I'm going to do the same range of motion once more. And I'd really have to strain to get any higher than that. So the shoulder range of motion is drastically affected by your posture. How upright your spine and the alignment of your rib cage and your spine and your head all affect the range of motion in the shoulder. So what does this mean as far as shoulder problems in terms of pain and, and in particular rotator cuff injuries? Well, what happens is that when your posture is not good, there's a subtle shift forward of the shoulder. It rolls forward. I'm going to show you in a model in a moment what exactly is happening with that. But um, basically what's going on is if there's any forward shift, any forward rolling of the shoulder, because you can, you can rotate your shoulder in and out if you do it consciously, what happens is the rotator cuff tendon, in particular the supraspinatus tendon, comes forward and it starts to get pinched in between the bone surfaces. And your body is not going to let you go much further and where that tendon's starting to get pinched. But for somebody who has this problem, who has this postural distortion, and the shoulder is, run for, is rolled forward, what happens is that just through normal life and using your arm and that type of thing, there's a lot more mechanical stress and actual friction and rubbing on that tendon. And what happens is that because the shoulder is rolled forward and because that tendon is rubbing up against the bones and ligaments, which I'll show you on the model, it's kind of like taking a rope and rubbing it across a rock repeatedly. So over time what happens is you get these little uh, basically abrasions which then turn into um, fraying of that tendon. And that produces inflammation so then it rubs even more. You get even more inflammation and over time you start to develop a situation where you can't really move the shoulder at all because the tendon is swollen up. It's got a lot of uh, painful spots along it, so anything that rubs, it's going to hurt when you move it. So that's basically what's going on with it, and this is why I place such an importance on the spine, posture, and the rib cage when it comes to shoulder problems, because the vast majority of time, unless there's been a direct trauma to the shoulder, or it's a, like an overuse type injury from a, like a baseball pitcher, and even in those cases, a lot of times it's postural, What's happening is it's actually more your posture, how, how upright you are, how good the health of your spine is, positioning of your head, 
those types of things make a much bigger difference on your shoulder than actually working on the shoulder does. And this is why shoulder rehabilitation usually takes so long is that everybody's focused right there. And the problem isn't there, it's back, rib cage, neck, and those types of things. So I'm going to show you now what's, what's actually going on with the model so you can get a little better idea of what's, what's happening in there. All right, so I've zoomed in now so that I can show you this model of the shoulder. And this is a model of the right shoulder. And uh, this is the shoulder blade, which is in the back. So you're looking at something that's going to be oriented kind of like so. And this is the collarbone, and this is the upper arm bone. And most rotator cuff problems, I'm going to turn this around so we're looking at the back of the scapula or the shoulder blade. And most uh, rotator cuff problems involve a muscle called the supraspinatus, which sits in this groove on top of the shoulder blade. Just, I'm going to kind of try to get my finger through there. And you can see where my finger comes out. That's where the tendon comes out and attaches into the upper arm bone. So the supraspinatus, uh, it gets its name, by the way, by this is what's called the spine of the scapula. And the supraspinatus, the name means above the spine. And it's actually, in this case, referring to the spine of the scapula, not the backbone spine. But supraspinatus comes through here. And you can see the tendon comes through kind of a tunnel in between the bones, between the collarbone where it attaches to the scapula. Um, this is what's called the acromioclavicular joint. And then there's some ligaments around it here, and everything's kind of held together. What happens is that under normal circumstances, that tendon will come through where my finger is, and it'll attach, and it has a pretty straight shot into its attachment on the arm bone. Well, when you roll that shoulder forward, as we talked about a minute ago, then the angle of the tendon's attachment changes. So instead of coming straight through here, if you can imagine that this is turned, now it's going to come straight through and go around the corner. So it's going to come out and it's going to turn to make its attachment. And because it's doing that, now it's going to rub over on this side of the tunnel. And as it rubs, like I said, it's kind of like taking a rope and rubbing it across a rock. Over a period of time, as that thing gets rubbed back and forth across that, that uh, wall of the, the tunnel that it has to go through, then it starts to get these little, little tears at first. And as those little tears develop, then you start to get inflammation, and the tendon will swell, so it rubs even more. And so you get more and more rubbing and more and more fraying. And so a lot of people that have so-called rotator cuff tears, it's really more of a case of rotator cuff fraying, um, a lot of little areas of damage rather than one specific torn site. And it's that type of a, of a problem that's actually probably far more common in, in my practice than an out-and-out out out tear which occurs through, through a trauma. But that's what happens with the rotator cuff injuries, and they tend to get worse and worse and worse over time, primarily because of this poor alignment of the shoulder. And unfortunately, most doctors and therapists tend to focus right on that shoulder joint as being the source of the problem, when in fact the shoulder joint is simply compensating for other postural issues in the back and the neck. So that's why it's so important to actually work on correcting posture overall rather than simply looking at the shoulder in terms of being able to correct rotator cuff problems. So that concludes this video. I hope you found it useful. And for more information on shoulder types of problems as well as general natural remedies and, and other natural health information, please visit my website at www.besthealthandwellnessinfo.com. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you on another video.